Hello everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Lost in Translation Mon. This time we'll be covering Digimon Ghost Game Episode 60, Water Ghost. I'm May, and I'm joined by the lovely Chloe. Hello! Now, of course, the equally lovely Quinn isn't available to join us, so we'll have to have uh, Quinn's Quatch Up next week. <laughs> uh, I'm just sticking with calling it Quinn's Quatch Up. That's basically it for housekeeping in terms of synopsis. We have body horror in the terms of having uh, water that drenches you and then makes you vomit out your water from your body, I guess, which is kind water of horrifying. Data or something, yeah. Yeah, some, it is It is very eerie and creepy and it looks pretty cool, but... Oh, yeah. It, it, spoiler alert, it gets reverted at the end of the episode. Yep. Which is something that, like... I don't know. I wish they commit to death more often. Yeah, although I guess it would kind of be a lot for them to just kill an entire city. Yo, oh, yeah, a lot of like the body count would be pretty immense. So yeah. I can see why they didn't. But it'd be sick I if they know. did. But I'm not surprised that they didn't. Oh yeah, <laughs> especially because Hero and Ruli also later on get water yeah. mummified as well. So the characters find out that there's some curse to do with this mummified thing that appeared who guess what turns out to be a digimon it is cathylamon who is an entirely new digimon kind of so mm. it looks like an evil version of marine angelmon hmm. and but looks a lot cooler and i'm a big fan of this design so i'm pretty happy with the new digimon and then of course we have hero and ruli get kind of like zombified themselves, so it's up to Kyoshiro as the last man standing, and or the last mon standing, I guess, to defeat Thylamon. They have a submarimon, which they use as a little submarine, as you do, to kind of stalk after uh, Kathylamon and her Divermon army, then, or which is the English name of Hangyomon. I just will always call it Divermon because I grew up on the English dub. So hang your mon slash dive them on. And uh, then we get Kyoshiro ejected from Submarimon. And then he and Thetismon have kind of like a telepathic heart to heart where they realize they both like humans and they should protect them. And then Thetismon evolves to Amphimon and kind of just slaps uh, Cathylamon on the wrist and says, Hey, you can have fun without killing people. And then Cathylamon's like, Really? Can I? I can have fun without murder? Which is kind of funny. Uh And then they end up reverting everything back to normal, and the episode ends. Now that we're done with the synopsis and housekeeping, (laughs) let's discuss our discussions. So, what were our highlights this week? I really liked the visuals of the intro a lot. Like, the intro was... And kind of unfortunately kind of frequently is, but was definitely a high, a, like a, a high point of the episode. Oh yeah, the intros are always amazingly done. They definitely know how to uh, pull you into an episode. They really know how to get a grasp on you mm-hmm. just by setting the scene. And that's definitely something that the show does do well. And it, again, it reminds me of The X-Files, which would always start with uh, the, the monster of the week. Mm-hmm. doing something evil or, you know, something happening that doesn't necessarily involve the main characters at all. Mm-hmm. It will kind of just be like, you know, the characters of the week, the randoms who just show up and the monster of the week and the monster of the week doing a murder or something. Mm-hmm. And it does remind me a lot of that where it sets the scene at the start of the episode, which I really appreciate. And I, I really do like the intros. They definitely are well done and well animated but then again I, yeah. I feel like a lot of ghost game is fairly well animated as well oh yeah but just this episode in particular i thought i had some really nice uh bits in the intro um yeah, like the laser the, show the was drunk, cool the, the poor drunk drunken lady. lady yeah um and god the water spewing from people's faces was terrifying uh turns out that uh even though what if people turned into sprinklers sounds funny, it can be pretty scary in execution. Oh, absolutely, especially when they have their like almost zombified expressions on their face and when we mm-hmm. have like the the rescue slash investigation team show up later on and they stumble upon this like horrific scene and then they too get kind of zombified. Mm-hmm. It's just really creepy and like 
I don't know, it's, it's just chef's kiss. So I absolutely agree that that is definitely a, a high point for the episode. And But again, it is, you're right, a lot of Ghost Game episodes do have highlights in like the first few minutes, which, mm-hmm. I don't know, it, it gets, it pulls you in. It definitely yeah. pulls you into the episode. Um, I also thought that uh, Amphimon's evolution sequence was pretty good. Uh, it was that nice was that so she good. she kind of almost princess carried Kiyoshiro, or I guess more it was just kind of she wrapped him up and carried him. But I'm gonna pretend like that was a princess carry. So uh, we did it. Read it. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah. See, I really, I I just really like how the evolutions to Mega are all fairly unique. Mm-hmm. They have their own fairly unique starts. The the way that the human is involved in the ad- evolution animation is always different. Like, they've sort of been thrown off in some direction. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I really appreciate that, especially because it involves the human. It's just, it's pretty cool. Something else I really liked is that, I mean, people will like their, their waifu, anime waifu kind of big booby ladies, and that's perfectly fine. But I'm really glad that we didn't get another... Big booby lady, a bigger, a bigger boobier lady. Yeah, yeah. I really, really appreciate that we didn't get like the the booby lady or just mm-hmm. equally booby lady. I'm glad that it's that Jellymon got one uh, waifu and then one kind of like just non waifu, but really cool. Yeah, I liked how the evolution wasn't like you know too quote unquote feminine. It didn't go like in a girls are always feminine, girls are always sexy. They mm-hmm. did kind of like a. They made her quite masculine in her in her positions. Yes, she's a she's a feminine character, but they didn't go like all pretty about it. They yeah, yeah. Kind there of... there weren't like you know little musical trills and sparkles and hearts flying off or anything like that. Yeah, which I mean, I love a magical girl evolution. I think that's really cool. But I'm glad oh, yeah. that we didn't get anything. Okay, the, the word I'm looking for is stereotypically feminine. Mm-hmm. Like she's still feminine presenting and she's still she's still a, a woman basically but they didn't make it too much like oh well she has to have like you know flowers and tutus mm-hmm. and be like be what you what you would stereotypically class as being a feminine character mm-hmm. it's just a bit more than that i do appreciate that and i yeah. also appreciate how while i'm not a fan of the the booby waifu lady that I'm glad that we got a booby waifu lady and a non booby waifu lady. Mm-hmm. It feels like both camps will be happy. Like I'm, I'm not in the boob, I'm not in the waifu camp, but I'm. I appreciate <laughs> that we got the we got a waifu, but we also got a non waifu. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, maybe maybe Amphimon can be a waifu to someone. Probably, I don't know. I I think the evolution sequence is cool, but I think <laughs> Amphimon herself looks kind of dumb. <laughs> I love it. It's like a deep sea diver design. I'm like a huge fan of this design. I'm uh, I'm all fair. aboard. I'm teach their own, I, I suppose. Yeah, and that's something I like about Digimon is that there are so many uh, varied designs of Digimon. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone is kind of, you know, looked after, so to speak. They all have their their types spoken for. I'm a big fan of this. Just uh, deep the, this kind of scary deep sea diver sort of design mm-hmm. so yeah um ve- really happy to see amphimon uh, another highlight is i kind of mentioned this in the synopsis but i'm a big fan of Cthylamon here i'm glad that while she's more or less just a color change of marine angelmon it's not just uh it's not just a basic color change it seems a little bit more than that it's not in the same way that Chamblemon was just Mushumon, but with slightly different colour and less detail. Hmm. Uh, we have slightly more detail, but not too much, like it's not too busy. So yeah, big, big fan of Cathylamon as well in terms of a new Digimon that is more or less a a variant of an existing one. Right on. Uh, well, I did just say that I thought Amphimon's design was a little weird. What I do really like about Amphimon is the... Um... The propensity towards English is cruise control for cool that we got. Yeah, yeah, that was absolutely. pretty excellent. Like it's very tanoshi. Mm-hmm. Like that was so... very very. Let's tanoshi. go. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that was adorable. It was excellent. and so on brand for Jellymon. Yeah, like, yeah. Like I'm really glad that we have this kind of like almost haunting design that Amphimon has, but she still has, like, the same adorable, like, Jellymon voice, but she's, yeah, she's gone to, like, English is cool mode, and that is, it's just so funny. 
Mm-hmm. I if there's ever an English dub of Digimon, I want Amphimon to say Japanese words randomly, like mm-hmm. "Wow, that is so kawaii!" Like just like that, yeah, yeah. and that'd be just like because sh- it would fit because Akiyoshiro is a weeb and Jellymon's kind of also I kind of get getting that way, and that's I guess she's kind of learning from Kiyoshiro in a way. Yeah, but Instead if she like- just like. Yeah, instead of very, very Tanoshi, we can get die, die, fun. <laughs> no, it'd be like, it'd be Totemo. Ah, uh, whatever. I'm yeah. not, I'm still learning, I'm still learning. But, but I get what you mean, like, it would be a replacement for that, and, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, th- th- that, that'd that that be cute. But, uh, yeah, so I, I like Jellymon's character. I like, I, I kind of want Cthylamon to hang out with Jellymon, because they both have kind of, like, this chaotic, fun energy. Mm-hmm. Like, big fan of that. I'm always a big fair. fan of the, the, the chaotic gremlins. And Cthylamon definitely had that energy. Uh, do we have any other highlights? Oh, I think I have another one if, if you don't. Um, I guess I just wanted to also say that I, I liked the concept of this episode a lot. Of the whole, like, you know, elder god needing to be revived by making people spew water from their eyes and mouth. That's, that's pretty metal. I liked that. I have my gripes yeah, that, about that is... it, but don't let that make you get the impression that i didn't like the concept of this episode i quite liked the concept of the episode yeah um my other highlight is that there's i'm not sure if they the it's referencing uh, one of the digimon cards or if the digimon card was hinting at this week's episode i've sent it to you on uh, on our discord chat mm-hmm. but it is a card for thetasmon in uh the 10th booster set and it's a Thetismon card, and she's hanging out with Marine Angemon, so that is the non-evil version of Cathylamon. Oh, uh-huh. And then in the background, we have uh, Submarimon with Gammon inside, which oh, uh-huh. we got in this week's episode, which we, we also had Thetismon and, again, Marine Angemon being the good version. Uh-huh. So I thought that... I'm not sure if that's just a, a reference one way or another, or if it's just, like, a cute coincidence, but I, I just... I really liked... Way. Yeah. Yeah, it can honestly go other way, but it, it all, at the very end, it's uh, it's just adorable to see Submarimon hanging out in Gammon. No, sorry, so, other way around. That's horrific. Uh, Gammon <laughs> hanging out inside of Submarimon. There we go. That's the right one. And that was just kind of cool. And also, I just really love seeing Submarimon. And how he's just living his best life, just rolling around in the water. And everyone's like, hey, are you the culprit? And he's just like, no, I just like water. And mm-hmm. he's just so happy. i just very happy to see Submarimon here. That's valid. But yeah, that covers my highlights. highlights. Yeah, yeah, mine, mine too. Uh, lowlights. Uh, my main lowlight is that, I mean, I know we, we already addressed it. That, of course, they can't just kill an entire town plus Rulian hero. Mm-hmm. But I I kind of wish that we committed to death a little bit more. Like, it just feels... <laughs> it just removed the stakes when we know that we can just kind of revert everything at the very end of the episode. And yes, it's episodic, so we can't just, like, kill everyone all the time. Because it's like uh, all those uh, murder mysteries that take place in a town and there's, like, you know, three people dying every week. And you're kind of like, what's the population of this tiny country town? Mm-hmm. Um, surely we're running out of people. It's, it's sort of like that. There's only so many people in the world, I guess. So I just still wish that we could commit to it uh, because it just makes the stakes a little bit higher. And uh, also, on a similar note, I the fact that Cthylamon was just kind of like, oh, I can be good now? Oh, okay. It just felt kind of like they ran out of time for a fight or any, like, convincing moments that Cthylamon could be good. It just felt like she went from super evil to just like, oh, well, I'll be good now. Yep. And she's just, she doesn't look good. I mean, you can't judge a, a Digimon by the variant that it's an evil variant of an existing good Digimon, but she just looks so evil. Mm-hmm. Like, and then she was evil and murderous, and now we're kind of like, don't worry, I'll be good. Like, I, I don't, yeah, I don't we're trust sure you. Yeah, we're just trusting that, yeah. I, and no, and yeah. there was no... um. Usually there's a moment of, like, Clockmon saying, don't worry, I'll look after her. Like, I don't trust... I, I know we're meant to, because I doubt that she'll show up again, but mm-hmm. I just don't try. I, I don't understand what's, like, the... Uh, what's the deciding factor on whether a Digimon just becomes good at the end of the episode or if it gets murdered? I feel like this could have been one where we just murder. I know Jellymon's yep. kind of more into a... 
like she will just pacify them or make sure everything heals or something on those lines. But I felt like this should have been a case of the demon of the week should have died. As much as I love Cathylamon, I, I feel like this should have been a Pubimon scenario of the Mon of the Week dies. Yep. That was one of my lowlights as well. I was a little bummed that we didn't kill the baddie this week. It just ended up being, you know, like a, a punk kid who needed to be taught a lesson. And I felt like, you know, going around and turning everyone into face fountains deserved a little more than just, like, the smack on the wrist and then bye that we kind of got. Yeah. Like, I I wish we can kind of, like, that there seems no determining factor on whether or not a Digimon is allowed to survive to see another day. I just... Yeah. It seems like when they actually kill humans, like, intentionally, that's, you know... A I mean, good she definitely could have. Indicator. And that's why I kind of felt robbed by this one. Because, I mean, like, you know, when uh, when Digitamamon was eating people because they're tasty, we killed Digitamamon. And this little, you know, punk is walking around making people spew water from their faces because it's fun and he wants a playground. But that's just, you know, rascal behavior that needs rectifying, not something, you know, that needs a, a, a you know, more significant response. It, it felt a little, meh. You know, and also like I, I, ha- I kind of had to look into this when we first heard about Cthulhuon, like in the episode guide listings where they have the synopses, and I was like, Cthulhuon sounds new, and I did find out that Cthulhuon's meant to be like Cthulhu's daughter or something, hmm. and that would have been a great moment to have Dagomon, who is basically just like the Cthulhu Digimon. Interestingly. Hmm. In Zero Two, Cthulhu... I'm oh, sorry, Cthulhumon doesn't exist. Dagomon does have an army of Hangyomon, huh. or at least Hangyomon-like creatures. It was kind of, like, left <laughs> kind of ambiguous of whether or not these Digimon were actually Hangyomon or just, like, not even Digimon. Uh, so that would have been interesting to have a Dagomon moment, but it's it's not really required because he's a perfect, and interestingly enough, Cthulhumon is a mega, so interesting there. Uh-huh. I was annoyed that we once again did a, you know, Espimon went to go look for the real hero, and that was the extent to which Espimon was brought up at all this episode. Like, oh, I'm glad that the characters just kind of seemed to be like, oh, he's just looking for the other hero. Like, it just sort of la- felt like they were laughing at him, not with him. Yes, but here's why it bums me out. It bums me out because... The fact that we're going out of our way so much to remind the viewer every week that Espimon exists and it is important what he's doing, as opposed to, um, is it Bakumon that just kind of shows yeah. up sometimes, or Aerodramon that just kind of shows up sometimes, means that, like, okay, we need to remember that Espimon is important, and if we're being reminded of Espimon every week, it means that the things we're not being reminded of every week are probably not going to be important. Yeah, like I'm I'm thinking I'm still thinking about like Rudamon, who I'm glad has showed up again, uh Black Tailmon Uva, who I feel like we haven't had for a bit, but is still like I'm still concerned. Yep. I, I haven't don't, had I don't Black really Tailmon Uva for a bit. We haven't had uh I, I'm becoming increasingly skeptical that we're ever going to get any sort of conversation about how uh Bokomon died with Gammon. Um Yeah. And especially given how much we keep on reiterating the whole, the the one who sent us uh, thing over the past few episodes, like, I feel like we're gonna get some closure on that, but not on much else. I think we, I think we did get the closure on Bokemon, though, I think. Did we? uh, We had, yeah, maybe 20 episodes ago. It might have been the, uh, the Ramon episode where the big pile of rubbish was turning people into zombies, and they had to, like, confront the idea that they had to put a Digimon out of their misery. I think that might have been the one where Gammon was like, uh, oh, going to the same place that Bokemon is, or something along those lines. Something. That does kind of ring so a there bell was, now. I yeah, think okay. It, if, if it wasn't in that episode, it was around, it was nearby that episode, but we have had Gammon more or less feel like he's come to terms with it, and there's some level of understanding that Bokemon did die. So... I I feel like we've we've had that, so that I'm not too concerned about. Uh, I'm more concerned about all the Digimon that felt like they were going to come back because they were kind of evil when they left. But I yeah, think that was like just them saying, the "Hey, Zasimon Digimon are just and several and, others." Uh, Felesmon. Yeah. But it's kind of funny how like they're all, like the Weedmon. They're all adults. Uh, Felesmon, I'm pretty sure, is a perfect. 
and now they feel like, you know, we've got Megas now. I don't think they're coming back. I think that was just to show that some evil Digimon are going to just keep on existing and being evil, but not necessarily involving themselves in the plot. Like, they're just around to show you that not everyone that you... Like, if you meet someone who's not nice in your daily life, and then you get them out of th your life, it doesn't mean that they're going to come back. They're probably just going to be awful somewhere else. So I guess it's just kind of like, they, they don't need to come back. We just know that they're off being evil or something. Yeah, if you say so. <laughs> I'll just kind yeah, of take like, your word on that one. It's... I mean, that's how I'm feeling at this point. I don't feel like yeah. we're going to have all the evil Mon of the Weeks who didn't die, but are still kind of a little bit suspicious and not like, hey, we're good now, which is what we got from Cthylemon. Which again, that's my main low light about this episode, like... Why I think I would have been I would have enjoyed this episode and been more satisfied if we just killed Cathalamon. Same. Like it makes no sense to her just being like, Oh, I'm good. I just wanted to have fun. It's like, uh, Cathalamon just wants to have fun. Um, but fun does not mean you murder people. And Cathalamon's just like, Oh, okay. Okay, well if you're not gonna let me play here, I'll go play somewhere else and you're just gonna have to trust that I'm not gonna, you know, murder another city or two for funsies. Yeah. I would not trust her at this point. Yeah, same. Um, uh, um, I forget. I forget its name. So I'm just gonna say Torpedo Boatmon. Save Kishiro. Thank you. I also like Torpedo Boatmon, but yeah, Submarimon just kind of saved Kishiro's life literally just by showing up. Like, if the if the baddies were intending that little wave as an attack, why did they just like stop? and leave when he showed up also waves don't work like that you can't just get in front of someone and prevent them from getting splashed by a wave if the like thing is already crested or like you know the wave is starting to break I, I wonder if it's just like is it even real water like it looked it had like a digital effect to it so it I'm did not but even people sure. were definitely like... getting wet but also there we did kind of like establish the rules and then break them several times like we established oh, okay Digimon. if you get your head like... wet you're going to become a sprinkler but we definitely broke that rule several times namely yeah, when said. all three of them got their head wet before the water started pouring out of the buildings no no, no. yeah no it's just welcome to digimon they they Something about Digimon is that they will change their rules. You've just got to take their word for it that the rules didn't apply for some reason. And that's just, that's just unfortunately no. Digimon. <laughs> I refuse. There, there's just, yeah, no, there's, there's just a lot of things where Digimon's just like, no, 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 take, take my word for it. Uh, in Digimon Tamers, they established that if you are underwater in the digital world, if you don't act, if you don't act like it's water, then it won't like, it won't behave like water, so if you think about it not being water, then it just won't be water, and that's just how they rode around the characters swimming underwater uh, without needing to breathe. Mm. But then but then they still, they're still they kind of inconsistent about whether or not it makes your hair wet or not, or the yeah. clothes wet. Yeah. So sometimes the hair would just look wet and be like, have drips coming off it, and sometimes it wouldn't. And it's just like, they're just kind of like hand wave, like, oh... Just take our word for it that that's just how they thought the water would behave. I'm, I'm not going to uh, let them just get away with that. Sorry. <laughs> oh, but they definitely will. And, not and on get my away watch. With... I'll complain they about will... it every time. They will change physics in the most amazing ways. Oh, I remember Thanks, when we were just like, <laughs> thermodynamics, I don't know her. <laughs> I, th I mean, the Ghost Game I still feel is, is better than Cole in terms of random, like, take our word for it, this is how it works. That's fair. But, uh, yeah, I just, I, I don't think I have any lowlights. I'm just like, mm, why are we not murdering Digimon? I've listed all mine, I think, now. Let me look at okay, the list okay. again to make sure. If Espimon's not on screen, everyone should be saying, where's Espimon? I mentioned that. Yeah, okay. I've talked about all mine. Cool. Uh, favorite character, Mon was Submarimon, almost Cathalamon, but again, Cathalamon should have died. So Submarimon, just because, like, I just, I, I, I really like Submarimon. Who is your favorite? I liked the concept of this episode way more than I actually liked the execution of it. Um, and a lot of the personalities of the actual characters in the episode just were like grating or annoying to me, but not in a compelling way. So I went yeah. with Party Girl, who was the first to get fountained at the beginning of the episode. The drunk lady. Yeah. I related to her. Okay, I will write down Party Girl as your entry for your favorite character. Thank you. 
Which at least it's not an abstract concept. At least it's an actual yeah. like character kind of like she looked like she was having a great time. She did. She looked like she was having a nice night and just kind of got caught in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. Uh, rating. Um, I'm, I gave it a three. It's just kind of. I feel like three is my default for was an okay episode. Didn't do anything immediately terrible, but at the same time, kind of followed story beats. It didn't do anything that wowed me. Mm-hmm. Just kind of existed and was an okay use of time. Like I didn't hate spending. Like I wasn't bored. I didn't hate watching it, but it was just kind of okay. And that's kind of what I've been. That whenever an episode does that or makes me feel like that, I give it a three, because a two point five being a pass. That's kind of like this is just okay. I don't really have anything that I like about it, but a three is kind of like, there were things that I like, but mostly it just kind of was as expected. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it it gets a three. How are you rating this episode? Uh, Surprisingly, I'm actually giving it a higher rating than you, although based off of your point distribution, there's a chance that uh, the the place that it actually ends up in is going to be worse. So I'll I'll be interested to see how that... uh... Yeah, I gave way too many fives and fours. You did. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm going with a 3.5. I, I really liked the idea of the episode, and I think that's what brought me up from just kind of like a neutral 2.5. Even though I didn't really like the, the characters as much, it was still a really cool idea for an episode, and I think if they'd leaned a bit more into the whole, like, if they'd leaned into making it a bit more horror, this could have been one of the better horror episodes, so I'm a little bummed that oh, they absolutely. didn't. But, yeah. so yeah, I, I'm gonna go with a 3.5 in the end. I feel like this episode, um, and I guess a lot of Ghost Game overall, it does go in really well with the horror, but some of the episodes, because it is episodic, they can't really do much each episode, and a lot of the episodes do kind of have the same kind of flow to them, but yeah, I just, I feel like 3.5 is 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 basically, yeah, the, the, the th- a 3 or 3.5 is kind yeah. of what I'd expect. I'm interested to hear what Quinn has to say. Same. Lately, we've been fairly, like, all saying the same. Like, for the last few episodes, we've been, even when we're not recording together, we've basically given the same rankings. Like, last week... Yeah, we've been on roughly the same page. Yeah, I gave a a three, you gave a three, Quinn gave a 3.5. Week before that, three, 4.5, 3.5. Week before that, four, four, four. Week before that, five, five, five. Week before that, four, five, four point five. So lately we've been kind of Mm -hmm. on the same page with that. Uh, Interestingly, I have also been taking note of our averages. So adding together the sum of all our scores Mm. and then dividing it by the, the... number of scores i guarantee case, you that you have 60. the highest average out of the three of us no right? really no, i have the i have uh i have i have the lowest what how so what I, so you so you have 3.7 as your average okay i have 3.508 and quinn i'm just gonna like i just realized that because quinn only has 60 hers is not going to be and quinn's is 3.58 so mine is yeah the Mine is the 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 lowest at three point five. Really? Yeah, because I have given like like I know I've given more fives than than y'all. I'm fairly certain. Significantly more I've... fives, but I guess probably also more like ones. And I think you even gave yeah, one a zero, uh, didn't you? Uh, so was Quinn. We're both given zeros. Oh, okay, like, I don't y- think I've given you're the zero. One who, yeah, you're, you're the one who hasn't, which is probably is why yours is higher. I've given a lot of ones, hmm. and uh, so yeah. But our overall our ratings are all fairly close together like there's not too much of a difference it's only between you and i mine's 3.5 yours is 3.7 that's only Mm 0.2 of of a mark well i am actually surprised that yours was not the highest average i'm pretty surprised that mine is but i mm. guess y'all have more like digimon hot takes about it than me i'm just kind of here along for the ride you know which is is great to have your perspective. Like a lot of the things that I either really like or really don't like, I'm saying as someone who's been like a, a long time Digimon mm-hmm. fanatic who thinks about it a lot. So it is nice to have the take of someone who <laughs> someone is, who is, was like two years ago. Wait, they still make Digimon? They still yeah. Which is always an interesting take to have for the franchise. So yeah, I mean overall our ratings are all fairly similar. 
Now, in terms of our ranking, I put this in uh, 36th place. So that means it's <laughs> hanging out with episode 35, episode 58. So it's between those two. So the last three episodes are all kind of in the same area. So it goes like episode 60, then episode 58 in 37th place, and then episode 59. So at least we're doing better than the previous ones. Uh, where are you putting this episode in your ranking? Uh, so it turns out I was right. I gave a higher ranking, but it's going to end up in a lower place on my list than yours. Yep. I put, I gave it a 3.5 and I'm putting it in 41st place. But not, that's not too far away from, uh, It's ballpark the same, yeah. It's not, like, yeah, wildly different, but, yeah. Yeah. Lately I have been given a lot of threes, though, to be fair. Yeah. I think we're all just kind of waiting for the, okay, you know, let's get us to the finale now. We keep on, you know, reminding us every week about who's sending us. And I'm stuff, glad that they're, so. like, addressing it, kind of. Like, even though we're not going anywhere with it, I'm glad that even we're at least... Yet, yeah, I hope we do soon, though. I can imagine us touching on it soon. I feel like I read somewhere that the, uh, the spring, like, anime lineup has been released and... Ghost Game slot has been replaced by something, mm. so which is not Digimon. So that means that yeah. we're not going immediately into Digimon like we did with Colin and, and okay. Ghost Game. So but in the next that few means months, it, potentially. Yeah, so which I was kind of like estimating maybe April. Okay. Like I feel like we've got like maybe a handful more of episodes. Yeah, but maybe uh, a dozen. yeah, so I can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine us like wrapping up fairly soon, especially now that we've got our three megas out of the way. In terms of our overall ranking, we obviously can't do it because we need Quinn to be there. Mm -hmm. And so we'll see if uh, how Quinn feels about this week's episode in uh, Quinn's Quat Shop. So do we have any miscellaneous thoughts about this episode? Um, I think I kind of already expressed the sentiment, but I wish that we had leaned a little bit more into the horror aspect of it instead of just being like, yep, just a, you know, kind of bratty Digimon who needs a smack and a, you know, good lesson. And then we're just going to trust them. Yeah. Um, could have been a, a really good horror one. Instead, was just kind of a mediocre evolution episode with a cool concept that could have been executed better. Yeah, totally agree. Now that we're done discussing this week's episode, let's move on to pondering postmon pat and predictions. First up, over on last week's episode on YouTube, so that's for episode 59, we have first up Daniel, who says that it is a ghost game way to tease you with something for an unreasonably long amount of time. And yes, quite a few people pointed out the small Gekamon could have solved the entire episode. The episode's writing was mixed at best. And they're saying that they think the reason why Gulus Gammon didn't feel nearly as impactful this time was in previous episode there was always been this innate feeling of there are no options left, we have played our cards, we're done. And then he shows up to turn the tie. This episode didn't feel that way. And yeah, absolutely, I agree. Mm -hmm. And in the end, I guess Gulus Gammon didn't even do anything. Like, other times Gulus Gammon was involved in the fight. Like, he would kill the Digimon, or which happened twice, I believe, at least twice, I can't remember. I oh, know in the third one he also killed the other Boromon. So yeah, he usually just shows yeah. up to murder, but this time he showed up to barter and then Hero rejected him and then was kind of like a, okay, see you next time, I guess. So I, I think Daniel's absolutely hit it on the head here. It just, it felt like there were other options and in the end, Gil Scamon didn't even do anything. Yep. Uh, next we have Diddy Danny. So they say that they love the podcast, so we're really glad that you're loving it, and Thank they'll you. be they'll, they'll miss it when Ghost Game ends, and we'll have to like I, I I hope that they'll do another Digimon anime at some point. There is the Zero Two movie coming out. There's no release date yet, but I'm sure we'll cover that once that releases. Um, I can't imagine that coming out before Ghost Game ends. Like that'll probably be something that comes out after Ghost Game. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll also miss Ghost Game and talking about it every week with uh, with Yarl. Anyway, they continue to say that they feel like Espimon would become Hero's partner for temporary time while Gammon turns evil and that's how he'll evolve. And yeah, that that's that seems pretty spot on. We still have Espimon's adult form to go. Uh, we just know that exists from the card game and from the Vital Bracelet. Is it, is it is just interesting that we have an adult form for this Digimon and nothing else. So what would an adult form do with a bunch of Megas? I I can't imagine that being particularly helpful. Which is probably another reason why Gullus Gammon's not 
as uh, impactful now because we have megas now <laughs> that can sort things out. Mm-hmm. And next we have Lazy Crocono who says that episode 59 was okay. Their favourite part was, uh, because they're a fan of Girl Scamon, with him even, uh, and which, which just hit was Girl Scamon showing up and Gammon being extremely salty, and that's why he appeared. And uh, Kyoshiro was brave, and that was something else that I really liked. I love seeing Kyoshiro being randomly brave and heroic. And then they're saying next episode, so this week's episode, seems that the creators are really afraid of water, with how many times water has been the reason to be horrified. That is that is true. I, I didn't think about that, but uh, we've had a lot of, like, the threat is water. Like... Yeah, I mean, I can kind of, it kind of makes sense. Water is something that you don't generally think of as a threat, so it's easy to kind of ignore it and let people just kind of walk into whatever the trap is of the episode. Yeah, like water is water is actually terrifying. Like, oh yeah, and I oceans. Mean, I, I, don't get I, I me was, started on oceans. Oceans are terrifying. Oh my gosh, I I was uh I was scrolling uh tiktok because even though i'm old uh older than a lot of people use tiktok now i feel i still want to feel young and i found out about this part of ocean uh i forgot what it's called but i think you have to get through it to get to um the arctic and it's just like you either get it like really flat and it's called like the lake or you get the shake and watching videos of this just made me horrified of everything because there's just nothing for like, that you can see through the windows, and it's just throwing the boat around for, f- like, it's having a good time with it. Like, water's terrifying. Yep. Uh, yeah, so we'll completely understand the, the horror of water. Mm-hmm. Next, we have user IU, who says they didn't expect Girl Scamon to show up, but man, the horror shots went to 11 before re- returning back to the, the humans back to normal. And they're wondering if the girl that appeared in this episode will mean anything and i'm like probably not like probably i but not, there yeah. was a time where i every second character who showed up i was like is this another chosen child but no yep uh, they're just digimon who the humans who hang out with digimon i guess next we get allison who says well not big frog mega this time they were hoping to see regular smon versus mega gekumon like in terms of a fight halfway through the episode but at least tona summer gekumon will always have sujinmon they're really hoping that Kathalamon was not just a marine age mon variation and she was but i i'm still a big fan of this design i feel like they did it the best they could it was yes it was just a variation but it was a cool one Lastly, we have Narumi Mori, who says that episode 59 is weird and they don't know if they like it or not. The time limit is very annoying because it just happens to make Girls Gammon appear, and they try not to have expectations, but they hope something different happens when Girls Gammon shows up again. And yeah, I have a feeling that something different will happen, and episode 59 was just meant to be like a lead up or a stepping stone towards that happening, but I guess like time will tell. But uh, yeah, so that's it for, uh, for Postmon Pat. Do you have any thoughts about the series so far? Now I feel like we're in the last, like, chunk of episodes of Mm -hmm. the series. Yep. Um, I mean, not really anything that we haven't said before. So, yeah, nothing, nothing new. I think I'm, I'm still feeling pretty good that this, this series can dethrone Atmon. I'd have to watch Atmon again to know for sure. Yeah, I think I do too. But... Though- like, it's been pleasant so far. I'm having a lot more fun watching this than the parts of Adventure Colon that I watched. Oh, yeah, it's it's leagues better than Adventure Colon. Because this is Adventure both Colon the is Ava just- podcast and the, you know, pooping on Adventure Colon podcast. Yeah, always. See, I, at the very least, if this series keeps on going at this sort of, like, three out of five, three out of five, three out of five way... I feel like it could still be at least in second place. At this point, I can't see it being anything less than second place unless mm-hmm. it just just takes like this tremendously sad dive where every episode is just like a one. Then it'll probably still maybe end up in the middle or upper middle. But I, I feel like at this point, it, I'd be surprised if it dipped in quality, at least in my opinion. So second place, which means that Savers and Tamers would be dethroned. Which that's good. I'm okay. I'm okay with having the new two new series up the top. Yeah. Then we do have the episode sixty one title. So the next week's episode is called Resurrection, which again from the preview looks just absolutely horrifying. Do we have any predictions for that? 
it seems like it could be a pretty sad episode. I feel like we're going to get some, you know, uh, some, oh god, I'm gonna forget which is which, either ethos or pathos, whichever one is emotional, I think it's ethos, from, you know, a human character who's never gonna matter again, who's gonna have to come to terms with the fact that, like, you know, his girlfriend died or something. Um, and my other part of my prediction might have been rendered invalid if we did actually, like, really get into this before, and I just kind of forgot, but I had written that if we're lucky, we might finally address the fact that Bokomon went to a farm upstate, but maybe we did already acknowledge that, but maybe we'll get yeah, more into the fact of, did. like, oh, hey, by the way, also, Gamamon, uh, you have killed people as Gulus Gamamon, not sure if you remember that. I still find it the funniest thing that Jellymon, the chaotic gremlin, has, like, the lowest death of bodies at zero. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, Jellymon's just not... Oh, except for Rare Ramon, but that was, like, a group effort, and they kind of had to... It was a mercy kill. Yeah. But otherwise, in terms of, like, solo kills, uh, it goes from, like, the Am Baby loves chocolate, has the highest count, mm-hmm. and Goromon has, like... One or two. A few, yeah. Jellymon. Jellymon has zero, but she's the chaotic gremlin. Mm-hmm. So that that is really funny to me. But yeah, I'm looking forward to next week. It should be interesting. I'm hoping plot, but I'm not going to hold my breath. I don't think we'll have plot. I think it'll be just another Mon of the Week. It might finish off with like some vague like gesturing towards plot. But yeah, I, I, I would like not be surprised if we get up, hint yeah. of plot at least. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel like at the very least we might have like someone else saying, "Oh, the one who sent us." And we might get a little bit more information about that. We might get Black Tail on Ufa. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine it being just like them throwing us into plot. I feel like we're gonna have a few more uh, small hints first. Okie dokie, so thanks for joining me everyone, you can join us next time for episode 61, Resurrection, but for now, if you want to find more about the podcast, link dumps in the description, and you can contact us and stay updated. You can leave us a comment on this episode on YouTube to join on the conversation, and for a full list of ways to find the podcast across the internet, head over to our link tree, which is linktr.ee slash lostintranslationmon. If you enjoy the podcast or videos or even just my silly little posts online, you can show your support by signing up on Patreon and getting some cool rewards and help us hit milestones. And thank you to our current supporters on Patreon, Stephen Reeves, who is Wild and 64 on Archive Own, Kadawashi, Chisai, who can follow on Twitter at Chisai236, Neobu, who says you should follow Chisai on Twitter at Chisai236, Lizmet, who is a Lekmon on Tumblr, Nicholas, Emery from Gone Will Hunting, a Hunt Hunter Who Watch podcast, Magnus, Lucas, Jason105, Patrick, Jason, Shelby, Digital Hazard, who is on Twitch at the Digital Hazard, Lemus, Tropimon, and Vmon Tamer. You can also make a on one-off donation on PayPal, which we found linked in the description. It's paypal.me slash Erdramon. You can also be to me on my coffee account, ko-fi.com slash Erdra. And that's it from my segment guide. But before we wrap up, I just want to wish a happy birthday to Chloe for the other yeah, day. Yep, yep. Thank you. It was a happy birthday. So I ha- did you have a hippity boop boop and a happy bird bath? All, all of the above. Yep. <laughs> all of the above and more. Yeah. So, of course, we will have Quinn's Quatch up next week. And again, I'm just, I, I want to see if we continue to, uh, to basically share like the same brain cell in terms of our thoughts about the episodes. Mm-hmm. I just like, I'm gonna say Quinn's gonna say a three. That, that's my prediction. What, what do you think? I think she'll probably rate it lower. Lower? You're saying I'm lower? guessing a 2 or a 2.5 from her, maybe. We'll see. It depends on how much she enjoys Amphimon and Catharlamon, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see but whether or not we'll I'm learn. right. We'll, we'll see how we go with that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so thanks for listening. Thanks for joining us. And of course, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.